Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Will, this is Joel. Thanks. And today I'm going to attempt to solder a Soyuk chip because I might actually have uh, invested in tooling to be able to do something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a first. It's going to be interesting. See if I can pull it off. So I've been soldering for a very long time. Most of my life, I could say at this point. I do toot my own horn and claim some mastery of the craft. However, if you've been following the comedy, you might notice certain bad habits that I have. Like, you know, wiping my solder tip with a piece of paper towel. It used to be, I couldn't exactly just go out and buy the tools and supplies that I needed. I live in a kind of small town in the north and, you know, we, we don't have resources like that. You're trying to fix on an amp or something, you need like a, a capacitor or a couple resistors and you, you go to the closest thing you have to a supply store. Like, hey, can you get this part? Like, oh yeah, we could get that part. Uh, minimum order 100 though, it's gonna be about 400 bucks. Uh, yeah, no. And the internet? Well, well, you couldn't just hop online and buy it. Like, it's not as accessible today. Now I go on Mauser or DigiKey, they have PayPal Express, I don't even have to sign up, and then boom, they have overnight express shipping. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's super easy now, so there's no excuses, and I finally invested in certain things, like, oh, I got one of these puppers right here. Oh yeah, I don't have to wipe with a freaking paper towel anymore. You just kind of jam that in there and you're good, even though, hold on here. Oh, my tip's shinier if I still wipe it. Whatever. Just tin that pupper. All right. Yeah, that'll do. And another thing that I've invested in that I feel I kind of needed is uh, some flux. You know, this is something about soldering that I actually wasn't aware of because it doesn't come up much in the kind of barbaric soldering that I do working on old vintage amps. But I am a follower of the Lewis Rossman channel and, and you see him doing it. It's like, oh, so that's how you smolder, solder small things. You, you gotta salivate all over it with this goo. Now, of course, it's not economically feasible for me to buy a one-off tube of uh, uh, solder goo from a guy in New York, so I kind of had to find the the closest equivalent from from DigiKey. Actually, I got this one, and it says um, smooth flow, no clean, tack flux. Uh, no clean seems like it might be bad for my purposes. At least no clean solder, but it's the tacky thing. <laughs> Basically, I just YOLO bombed to cart a flux that kind of had the same color and said tack on it based on what I saw on the Lewis Rossman website. How do I put this together now? We got a rubber bumper and it already has a kind of a thing in there. Do I have to remove that thing? It, it, it says th there's instructions. How to install the plunger. Push the rubber tip onto the plunger. All right. Make sure the orange screw trap is tight to prevent dispensing. Uh, yeah. Push the plunger until the rubber fully inserts into the back of the white stopper. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess I could have guessed, but you know. RTFM, remove orange screw cap, push to dispense, pull back to stop. Well, I'm gonna give it a little pre-pull. Yeah, ha ha ha. I don't think the camera's actually on me here. So should I use the uh, metal tip or the plastic tip? I guess we'll start off with, um, I don't know, the metal tip seems good. We'll try that. Okay, so supposedly this should make my job a heck of a lot easier for circumstances like this. Here's an old motherboard. I scrap parts off old motherboards. They're an excellent source of vitamin MOSFET if you need some. Like, geez, I, I think that's one. That's definitely one. I think that's one. That and that are definitely one. You got MOSFETs for days on these puppers and it's great. And you know, this board clearly has bad capacitors. Look at that guy. That guy's got an actual hole in it, you know? Like this board is just not having it anymore. But I notice on this board, we got right here, if you blink and you miss it, oh, oh, a little LM385 op amp. I can use that. So the idea here, if I understand correctly, just kind of <laughs> from what I've seen from the Lewis Rossman channel, if I just kind of schmoo this crap on there, I should just be able to um, probably clean my tip first. Oh, oh, look at that. Okay, that that did nothing. Hmm. Smells like maple. Hey, actually, I think I got it lifted there. I guess the flux helps the heat distribute a little bit more evenly. Wow, that's the easiest I've ever pulled one of these things. This stuff is working well already. And you gotta spray with alcohol, clean it down, bud. I tried taking that thing off this board already, and it was like, oh, this isn't happening. So, hooray! Flux! It does what it's supposed to. 
So now what do we do with this guy? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got these kits here. Got them from DigiKey. Part number just straight up, PA0001. And this is a Soyuk to dip adapter. So we dump these out. Comes with some very uh, basic uh, instructions on what looks like the back of a business card. Oh, that's smart of them. And then you gotta solder that chip onto here now. And then you add some uh, pull pieces. And then it can be dip compatible. Now, it's for eight pence, but they give you, uh, they give you like 20. Is there 20? I don't know why they give you, I, I guess it's just, they might as well, like, are these easy to damage? Am I gonna find out why they give you extra? Or am I gonna have uh, extra components to work with? I don't mind having jumpers, except that they're SMD and I kinda need through hole, but I digress. We gotta get that onto here. All right, so I've gone and chuckered this popper to the soft jaw vise. Oh, I, I went for the paper towel. And I'm gonna grab some solder, and we need to tin these. Should I should I have flux for this? I'd like to think I could do th th do this without flux. Yeah, I went I went fine without flux. <laughs> I keep going for the paper towel. Oh, it's gonna get used to that. Uh, yeah. And now I gotta figure out what side's pin one. I got so much schmoo on this, I can't see the label anymore. Ha! Yes, it's gonna be this way. I'm gonna be using paper towels for other stuff now with all this goo everywhere. Oh, tay, bud. Oh, tay. Oh, are my hands too shaky to do this kind of thing, sir? Well, it went on there. Not necessarily straight, but it did go on there. Now let's give it a rotate, hit the other side. I feel like, yeah, I should probably like, okay, let's try this. Oh yeah, that's way cleaner than the other side. So uh, let's redo this guy. So, just add some sound effects and it just works well. So assuming I didn't overheat this part, it should work. Now we have to get the fingers on the bottom. And that is like, okay, so we got to, to get a, a four pack off here somehow. Uh, is that why? Because we have to snip and it's like, okay. Is it like one of those, ugh. Okay, last time I did it, I did one of these. Am I gonna be able to find that now? Break off another four. Ah, I see where that one went. All right, so they give you a jig, which is nice of them. That jig's gonna keep your pins properly aligned. So let's tin ourselves some surfaces. Now we gotta uh, seat that on there. Those tin surfaces, um, bit messy. You know what, I don't think this is gonna work. I put too much, uh, too much solder on the one side. Well, we'll give it a try. Oh, those went on nice. Give her a rotate. It's great because if you already have tinning on there, the flux keeps the solder fresh so you're not brittle burning it up. Hmm, yeah, it smells like, it's like you got pancakes going on here, bud. Did it already solder the other side here? Damn, that was way easier than I expected. So, who knew? Well, all sorts of people knew. Flux, I think it's gonna be something I can't live without from now on. Whether or not I'll use it in a lot of my soldering, but damn, when I do need it, I really need it. So this should uh, work now to some capacity, even though it looks like hell and you're supposed to be able to clean it off with alcohol, even though there's so much of it in there. I think you'd have to like soak it or something. That should work now. Uh, testing it, how are we gonna test it? The annoying way, I have to go install it in something. All right, so see it here is a DOD Meomstein pedal that I have on good authority. Takes a dull off amp. But then of course these Arshin mongers put the IC mount on the wrong side of the board. So I can't get at it without taking her all apart. And she doesn't like being taken all apart, but it can be done. Oh yeah, and it's under the pot too. And oof, we might have space issues. Let's get a tweezer that's not schmooed and goo and get this uh, TL072 out. Normally a uh, 4558. So now I should be able to, because I have socket capability on there, I should be able to pop this guy right, right in. What the, ooh, bit wide, bit, ugh. Okay, that does ultimately fit, kind of. Uh, if we're going to use this adapter for projects, we're going to have to make room for it. Those pins are entirely too long. Like if I put this back together again, I don't know if it's gonna work proper. Yeah, I'm just kind of loosely hovering on it. V so that we can make it work. Uh, let's give it a try. <laughs> Conveniently, I have an amp right here I was working on. It's a bit out of frame, but it'll do. 
that noise is not promising, but then it's not activated right now. That doesn't sound good yet. I think I hear a little bit of oscillation. Okay, pedal off, pedal on. new guitar today. Little noisy. Well, that's half normal. Plus the amp's open. It does work though. So, an op amp scrapped off a motherboard into a pedal. So, uh, why did I want to do this other than scrapping an op amp off a motherboard? Because, you know, that adapter costs $4. And one of those op amps costs maybe 70 cents. And you can get them in PDEP. So surely there's more to this. Well, yeah, if I want to use better op amps. Like this guy. Can you see that? Yeah, it's another, another op amp. Let's zoom in. Here, an unboxing. The teeniest unboxing. I'm worried that when I'm peeling this, it's gonna throw, oh, no, there it goes. Hey, yeah, I want it to fall out. That, <laughs> it's so small I can barely read the label, is an OPA1612 dual op amp. It is a Burr Brown op amp, to the best of my knowledge. It doesn't say Burr Brown on, on it, but it's a higher end precision op amp. And it was another one I wanted to try for dual op amp purposes. And it was not available in PDIP. So that's why I have this adapter kit. I bought two adapter kits. One is a test to do with one of those lesser op amps. And another one to actually do this nice guy here. Cause if that thing sounds anything like the other Burr Browns I've played with, it's gonna be uh, quite a bit better in my pedals. So we do that process now all over again. Tinny tinny. All right, I need to mark one of these tweezers for schmoo and the other for clean handling. These ones are for clean handling. Jump down on there, pla, some schmoo. Jump to arrange it nice and psh, 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 push her on there. One side, schmoo, two side, looks good. Flipper, snap into a Slim Jim. Recover the small parts from the other side of the shop. Yeah, that's why they gave us one of those is committed to the void. How about if I, um, yeah, held it down that time. Load them into the jig. Give her a tinny tin tin. Oh, how rude of me. It's half out of frame. Get that situated on there. Schmoo to go. Flipper. Schmoo to go. Press. Pull the jig off. Now do the inner and pshaw, 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 pshaw. Ha, huh, that was record time. That went a lot faster with that initial practice run. So this guy is a precision audio amplifier and it should work just fine in this pedal. Not that anything can save the tone I'm getting on the crappy guitar cab that I have underneath the bench, which isn't even mic'd by the way, so don't judge. Now this is gonna be harder to remove. All right, she's installed. All right, plug and play, bud, plug and play. Huh? It does sound very different. It's warmer, way less distortion. Oh, maybe this op amp isn't going to be good for pedals. Oh, heh, it's disabled. Correction, way more distortion, way more gain, because this op amp, uh, it probably has a higher open loop gain. Can't remember its slew rate. I remember it wasn't too, too high. I have the gain turned down quite a bit and the touch sensitivity is uh, quite impressive.
Well, that's a success. And the sound of this is gonna be interesting. Can't wait to plug it into a better cab and a warmer sounding amp. But hey, so that's the uh, kind of how to P a 0001 Soyuk to P-dip adapter. Letting you put P-dip op amps in your, or pseh, I got that all backwards. Letting you put Soyuk op amps in your P-dip application. That is gonna be handy. I, I'm kind of, I kind of gotten carried away ordering op amps the last little while to try in my pedals. I gotta calm the frig down, especially as it's starting to get expensive because between the price of that op amp, what was it, a $5 or $8 part? It was not one of the cheaper ones. And then adding another $4 adapter on top of that. You know, it's frig all in a big ship, but uh, it's just curiosity for this cap. Trying to figure out what all these various puppers are gonna do and sound like. Thinking outside the box, instead of your same basic Biatch 4558, there might be better options out there. And I'm not sure what this actual video was about. So maybe I should talk so much about these other projects out of context. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more. Cause yes, I guess the theme is pedals and amps. Why else do I need an op amp? Phew. I swear I had my coffee today. Here.